The Chrysler turbine cars are automobiles powered by gas turbine engines that Chrysler made between 1962 and 1964. Bodies for the Chrysler turbine were made by Ghia in Turin, Italy, with final assembly taking place in a small plant in Detroit, Michigan. After a period of testing, the vehicles were reclaimed by Chrysler. All but nine were destroyed. The Chrysler turbine car was the first and only consumer test ever conducted of gas turbine powered cars. Of the total 55 units, 5 prototypes and 50 production cars, most were scrapped at the end of the trial period, with only 9 remaining in museums and private collections. Though Chrysler's turbine engine project was terminated in 1977, the turbine car was the high point of a three-decade project to perfect the engine for practical use. The car sounded like a giant vacuum cleaner, which was unexpected to consumers who were more familiar with the sound of a large American V8, that being said, some uh, observers admired that sound. The bodies and interiors were crafted by Ghia in Italy. The mostly completed bodies were shipped to Chrysler's Greenfield Avenue Turbine Research Center in Detroit for final assembly. Between the expensive Ghia bodies and the cost of the engine, each car may have cost as much as $50,000 to build, the equivalent to $381,000 in 2016 dollars. A total of 50 production turbine cars were built between October 1963 and October 1964, plus the five prototypes, three of which differed in roof and paint schemes. As each body was finished and sh shipped to Detroit, Chrysler employees installed the gas turbine engines, the torque flight transmissions, and electrical components to prepare the cars for use by the 203 motorists, 23 of them women, who were chosen to test them throughout the country. The turbine car is a two-door hardtop coupe with four individual bucket seats, power steering, power brakes, and power windows. Its most prominent design feature are the two large horizontal taillights and turbine nacelles with backup lamps installed inside, giving the appearance of highly styled exhaust. They are mounted inside a very heavy chrome sculptured bumper. Up front, the single headlamps are mounted in chrome nacelles with turbine styling themes, creating a striking appearance. This theme is carried throughout the center console in the interior and the hubcaps. Even the tires were specially made with small turbine vanes molded into the white sidewalls. The tires measured 7.5 by 14 inches and were bias ply. It is finished in a reddish brown frost fire metallic paint which was later renamed turbine bronze and was made available on production automobiles. The roof is covered in black vinyl with chrome window trim and the interior features bronze colored English calfskin leather upholstery with plush cut pile bronze colored carpets. The turbine was only available in one color with no options that were available. The fourth generation Chrysler turbine engine runs at up to 44,500 revolutions per minute and can operate using diesel fuel, unleaded gasoline, kerosene, JP4 jet fuel, and even vegetable oil. Chrysler claimed the turbine can gulp anything from peanut oil to Chanel No. 5. The president of Mexico, Aldolfo Lopez Mateos, tested this theory by running one of the first cars successfully on tequila, after Chrysler engineers confirmed that the car would, be, would operate successfully. The engine created 130 horsepower at 3,600 RPM output shaft speed, and 425 pound-feet of torque at zero RPM sh output shaft speed. The engines were touted for being virtually vibration-free and very simple, using 80% less parts than a traditional gasoline piston engine. They were air-cooled, so they had no internal cooling system, and a very simple electrical system featuring only one spark plug, a generator, and the battery. Starting the engine required the transmission to be in start-park, the key to on, and, the un and to wait for the brake pressure light to extinguish on the dashboard. Once it extinguishes, you then turn the key to start. The starting cycle is completely automatic. The transmission in the vehicle was a modified Chrysler Torque Flight 3-speed automatic transmission that had the torque converter removed, making, a, making the vehicle a direct drive unit connected to the reduction gear directly to the output shaft. Suspension did not follow Chrysler's ubiquitous independent front and longitudinal torsion bar system of the time, 
but rather featured contemporary designs using independent front suspension with coil springs at each wheel. The front suspension is upper and lower wishbones with coil springs and shock absorbers. Rear suspension was more typical of Chrysler with leaf springs and direct acting shock absorbers. Luxurious and lasting beauty are displayed throughout the turbine car by full leather trim accented by bright and brushed metal finishes. Seats, doors, trim panels, and instrument panel are covered in soft, rich, copper-colored leather. A unique and striking feature of the interior is the bright anodized aluminum console tube extending from the front to the rear between the seats. The instrument panel is airfoil in shape and enclosed in leather to a point midway down to the lower panel. Below the leather is a horizontal electroluminescent band with the remainder of the lower panel covered in a satin finished stainless steel. The instrument cluster comprises of three circular pods mounted over the steering column. The center pod, covered in leather, contains a speedometer, the odometer, trip odometer, high beam indicator, and fuel gauge. Both left and right pods intersect the lower panel and are painted to match the non-reflective color of the leather covering on the top of the dash panel. The left pod houses the turbine inlet temperature gauge, ammeter, oil pressure gauge, and the oil pressure warning light. The right pod contains an electric clock set in the center of the tachometer, which indicates the speed of the first stage turbine. The dashboard is lit using the electroluminescent panels and the gauge pods, and on a call-out strip across the dash. The system did not use bulbs, instead an inverter and transformer raised the battery voltage to over 100 volts AC and pass that high voltage throughout special plastic layers, causing the gauges to glow a, with a blue-green light. The interior features a unique quad bucket seating for four passengers and are covered in copper-colored English calfskin leather upholstery with pleated center inserts. Bright molding surrounds the seat back perimeters. The carpeting is the same copper-colored copper with plush cut pile nylon material covering the entire flooring. The headliner is an off-white perforated vinyl. The car itself was designed by the Chrysler Studios under the direction of Elwood Engel, who had worked for the Ford Motor Company before his move to Chrysler. The designer credited with the actual look of the car was Charles Mashigan, who designed the two-seat show car called the Typhoon, which was displayed at the 1964 World's Fair in New York City. Engel used many older Ford styling themes. The rear taillight bumper assembly was copied directly with revisions from a 1958 Ford styling study called the La Galaxy. He used none of the themes associated with his 1964 Imperial. As Engel incorporated many of the design themes from the 1961 Thunderbird, and because the car was a four-seater of similar size and appointment, many enthusiasts called the Ghia Turbine the Engelbird. After Chrysler finished the user program and other public displays of the cars, 46 of them were destroyed. 45 of the destroyed turbines were burned and crushed at a scrapyard south of Detroit. The 46th example was destroyed at the Chrysler Chelsea Approving Grounds during a crash test study. Chrysler announced that this was necessary to avoid a tariff, but that was only part of the story. The destruction of the cars was in line with the automobile industry's practice of not selling non-production or prototype cars to the public. Of the remaining nine cars, six had the engines deactivated, then they were donated to museums around the country. Chrysler retained the three operational turbine cars for historical reasons. One turbine car that is functional, owned by the Museum of Transportation in St. Louis, was photographed for Mopar Action Magazine and, appeals, and appears at car shows around the United States from time to time. The other two cars in private ownership, Jay Leno has one in his house and garage in California, and a gentleman in Terre Haute, Indiana has one in his private collection as well. Both are operating, fully functional, and drivable. And this does conclude our detailed look and history of the 1963 Chrysler Turbine. As always, thanks for watching.